Today on the Survivor Diet Challenge, I am going to show you guys how to turn this into this into this. How do we get up? Ooh. It's time to get up and start. Let's get started. Here's our start. Okay, I'm pretty excited today because it's a beautiful day outside. I actually have shorts on and I'm going on my first adventure. I have a plan, I have a plan today. And most of the time when I have a plan like this, I'm very optimistic with what my potential outcome could be. The plan today is to go get some salt, maybe get some clams, and maybe get a trout. And have a nice clam, trout, and asparagus dinner. It's a beautiful day out and the sun is shining. Let's go for it. Let's not get a speeding ticket along the way. fish to get them on ice in a seawater slurry as quickly as possible so I have my fish here and I just stopped off at 7-Eleven to get a bag of ice. There's the fish. Take a little bit of my seawater. All right. It's gonna chill that fish nicely there and let's go heading on over to the next stop. Welcome to the clamming spot. We go. Welcome to the Navasink River. This is big flat clam bed right here, and I can already see there's a lot of clamors out here, a lot of guys digging them up. So the cherry stone clams, they do not dig too far down under the sand. They're not too deep. So check out the blades on my rake right there. They're about maybe, let's say two and a half, three inches. Let's say three inches long. And we just kind of comb the sand. And just kind of drag it through until I hear or feel, sometimes I feel like a little clunk sound, like a little bonk, and that's the sound of the clamshell. Oh, there we go. Hear that clunk? We dig it up. And there you go. Perfect. Not easy work clamming. That feels like one. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one right there. That's a big uh, chowder clam or a quahog. So those are good. We're gonna make uh, some, probably some clam soup, clam chowder with those. 
Okay, so that is the way to dig clams. Very good, let's see, I have about, uh, I've only been here for about 20 minutes. I have about a dozen clams. Successful afternoon clamming, I would say. As the train goes by. That was a pretty successful day clamming. Just for the, about an hour or so, I got a couple dozen and I'm heading on over to the small trout pond in Red Bank that they stock with rainbow trout every year. Stuck in traffic. You know, normally it would take me 10, 20 minutes to get to this little pond in Red Bank. And I'm gonna save you guys the trouble. I'm gonna do some internet magic right now, a little YouTube magic, and we are at the pond right now. I've been sitting here at the bank of the pond probably for about maybe half hour or so. And I had one little bite. I don't think it was a trout. So I think it might just be too late in the day. Sometimes they just don't bite. The trout fishing didn't go as well as I thought it was gonna go. That's okay. However, the guy across the pond caught a trout and he called me over and he said, hey buddy, you eating these? Yeah, I'll take it, thanks. I'll be right over. I got it. So I have one trout, one sea robin, two dozen clams, and some asparagus. I'm kind of hungry right now, needless to say. Time to pick some asparagus. It's not bad at all. Try to clean these fish. I think the trout's gonna be here, so let's start with that one. Okay, so all you really need to do with the trout, just gut them, clean the bloodline out in the middle, and then wash it off. Now this is an interesting fish. It's got a lot of plates, like armor on it, a lot of different weird fins, but ultimately it's still a fish. I've never filleted one, but it should fillet very similar to most fish. Not too bad though. Got a decent fillet out of that side. You know, I'm, sometimes I'll take a fish like this and I'll make a fish stock out of it, and I probably should do that. I just don't want to. And there we go, pretty good. Nice little haul for today. Got a trout and fillets of my, forgot the name of that fish. Birdfish, sea robin. All right, we're finally at the end of our adventure where we get to eat something, and I made some rice. The rice, I'm allowed a bag of rice. Here's what I got for myself, just so everybody's aware. Some specialty brown rice right here, five pounds. That's what I have to ration for the whole duration of this challenge. So I have a frying pan and I have all of this. Well, what do you do? You have to create something that looks like a meal. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pot and I'm gonna put three of my clams right in there. And I'm gonna fill this just a little bit of water and just put that on some heat. Steam those clams open. To shuck a clam, some people try to wiggle that knife in between a groove. I like to go in the back of the clam like that, kind of push my hand right in. That seemed to go in pretty well, see, until it gets into that groove. And I just slice right across it, and what you're left with is two half-shell clams like that. There we go, that's my first uh, Survivor Diet food right here, and it's 7.51 p.m., so you can imagine that I'm pretty hungry. Very good.
Very good. Now the clams that are steaming in the pot right now, those clams are gonna release some clam juice. You don't have any oil, you don't have any butter, you don't have any seasonings. Everything's kind of bland, so you have to use what we have. What I have at my disposal are asparagus and clams. I also have a secret weapon that I've been uh, holding on to. You could look back at one of the videos that I have made in the past. Check this out. This is my jar of maple syrup that I made about a month ago. I have a little bit of that for sweet, and sometimes you can cook with that because that will help to caramelize some things. I don't have any salt yet, so the clam broth, that juice that was inside the clams that I steamed will add some saltiness to the asparagus as they steam. They are nicely coated and they will steam up a little bit until they're tender. And then my plan is to add a little bit of maple syrup to that, give it a little bit of sweetness. Maybe two teaspoons should be enough to get a nice sweetness to this. And you'll see, oh, it's got a nice smell. As soon as I added that in there, it smells really nice. The plan is to use the same pan just to saute those bits of fish in there. And I have a little bit more clam juice to give a little bit of saltiness to the fish. See around the pan, it's starting to get brown. Not burnt, but caramelized. And that's those sugars in the maple syrup. And we're gonna go right in with our fish pieces. Do a little steaming of the fish as well. Let's taste this uh, sea brown. Well, I can't even remember that name ever. Remember, plain, bland fish, no seasonings other than the clam salt. Not bad. It's not great. It's not my preferred fish, but not bad. And that's a wrap. Oh, if you enjoy watching me do these things and you enjoy watching my videos and like my channel, please drop a comment. Tell me some other things that you might like to see me do. As always, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel because that really helps a lot too. And uh, click that little notification bell That'll give you a notification whenever I upload a new video. Have a great night. I need an Audi. I need a wig on. I don't have an Audi.